This is a stimulus update and daily news report. Both the White House and Congress members have given a new timeline of when we could expect to get the bipartisan infrastructure package and the part two reconciliation bill, which has all those stimulus programs in it, when it could be voted, when it could be passed. I'll give you those timelines. I'll play a video clip. And also the Problem Solvers Caucus, the bipartisan group, has said that they want to have a standalone vote for their bipartisan infrastructure package. I'll let you know how this messes up Nancy Pelosi's plans and the petition for the $2,000 monthly stimulus checks has reached almost 3 million signatures so far. I'll give you the latest updates on a fourth stimulus check as well. Hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday. If you appreciate these fact-based, fast-paced updates, hit the like button down below. So the Biden admin is launching a door-to-door -door push to vaccinate Americans and it sparks major backlash. So President Biden had the goal of having 70% of the population vaccinated by July 4th. That did not happen. So yesterday, what he said is now we need to go community by community, neighborhood by neighborhood, and oftentimes door to door, literally knocking on doors to get help to the remaining people protected from the virus. Let me know your thoughts on this down in the comments below. The people who have decided not to get vaccinated, will a door to door strategy help them get vaccinated? Uh, what do you think about this uh, strategy overall? Is this a good idea, bad idea? Let me know your thoughts on this down in the comments below. So the bipartisan problem solvers call Caucus backs the Senate infrastructure deal and is calling for a House vote, a standalone House vote, which could mess things up a little bit. I'll give you the details on this. So yesterday they came out and said the Bipartisan Problem Solvers Caucus strongly supports the Senate infrastructure framework, which is closely aligned with our own Building Bridges proposal released last month. In light of the bipartisan bicameral genesis of the framework, we encourage an expeditious standalone vote in the House and thank our bipartisan Senate partners and the Biden administration for working so closely with us to demonstrate that cooperation is still possible in Washington. So basically, they want a standalone vote, which could, could, could cause problems, especially since Nancy Pelosi said she will not have a vote in the House on the bipartisan infrastructure package unless there's a part two reconciliation bill which has all those stimulus programs in it. So with the bipartisan group's endorsement of the Senate infrastructure package, this could trip up Nancy Pelosi's strategy. So what's happening here is the 58 members of the Problem Solvers Caucus said that they strongly support the Senate proposal. So it's 29 Democrats, 29 Republicans, which means that if all Democrats vote and they get the 29 Republicans, that's more than enough people that could pass this infrastructure package in the House. Uh, if the group's 29 GOP members vote for the plan, House Democrats have room to lose support from skeptical progressives and still pass the roughly $1.2 trillion infrastructure framework. So basically, like uh, AOC and a few other progressives said that they won't vote for this package unless it has items A, B, and C. If they decide not to vote for it, the 29 Republicans could actually make up for those votes. So however, the group signaled that it could try to trip up House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's strategy to pass the bipartisan plan in concert with a democratic proposal to invest in childcare, education, and efforts to fight climate change. So this could cause some problems, but still ultimately it's up to Nancy Pelosi. She has all the power. She has all the cards. She could decide when something votes, when it doesn't. It doesn't matter if the Problem Solvers Caucus says that they want to have a standalone vote now. It's still up to Nancy Pelosi. She still has all the power in the situation. So when it comes time to vote for an actual pattern, Package, what they're saying is that uh, the leaders are going to come back. They want to do it in July. Here is the White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki talking more about timeline. Sorry. Um, <laughs> on the family's plan, yeah. um, obviously as Biden goes tomorrow to Illinois sure. to promote his vision, um, the White House is still in negotiations about what is actually going to make it into the package. Um, are there certain, as with the infrastructure plan, certain core priorities or red lines that he has around this package in a similar way? Sure. So the you're talking about the reconciliation package, right? Okay. Uh, so the president is uh, obviously there's a lot of work that needs to happen with Congress, and uh, we expect over the next week there to be a lot of behind the scenes uh, bill writing, negotiations, discussions on Capitol Hill, long nights, lots of coffee uh, over the course of the next several days. Given that Leader Schumer has has uh, conveyed that he would like to see both the reconciliation package and the infrastructure bill on the floor in July, and we're in July now. Uh, in terms of the 
president's priorities. Uh, he has outlined uh, his blueprint in his budget. That includes the American Families Plan, includes uh, key components he'll talk about when he's on the road tomorrow uh, in Illinois. Uh, it includes an extension of the child tax credit, includes paid leave, it includes universal <coughs> pre-K, making community college a reality for Americans across the country. It also includes a uh, prioritizing and pushing for uh, components of the American Jobs Plan that did not make it into the infrastructure, uh, final infrastructure bipartisan agreement. Uh, so that is uh, key components of uh, climate tax credits, uh, key components that will help address our climate crisis, also a number of proposals on housing affordability and accessibility that the President would like to see uh, in a final reconciliation process, uh, but will be closely engaged and closely discussing with members who are writing the legislation. Okay. So although Jen Psaki is saying that there's going to be long nights, lots of coffee, that should already be happening now. Why isn't it happening now? So if we look at the congressional calendar for 2021, we could see here that the Senate and the House are officially on vacation. They're out of office. So if we look, today is July 7th. They have been off. The Senate is in red. The House is in blue. So the the uh, Senate has been off since the 25th, so they're off this entire week and they won't get back until the 12th, which means that an official vote won't happen in the Senate until the 12th and an official vote won't happen in the House until July 19th. So even though that the House wants to have an immediate vote, the Problem Solvers Caucus saying they should have the vote right now, that's not gonna happen. We're still waiting for Congress to get back from vacation, get back into office in DC and actually take action. So they could say that they're gonna have long nights and coffee, but that'll be because they procrastinated until the last minute so they could have a deal actually happen. Keep in mind that they're getting paid $174,000 a year to take all these weeks of vacation, especially when they've been promising that there were gonna be all these stimulus programs, including childcare, free college, uh, expansion of child tax credit, as well as the potentials that could be in it that have been proposed, like the $25,000 and $15,000 home buyer credit, fourth stimulus check, Medicare expansion, uh, social security increase, all those things have been waiting on the sideline because of Congress taking all their time in the world. So when it comes to timeline, it looks like July 12th is the soonest that we could have an actual vote, which means that if they prepared everything, if they've done all the negotiations, then they could have the vote by July 12th, which is unlikely. They're probably not gonna get start working until July 12th because that's when they'll officially be in office. They're gonna take a day to, I guess, reacclimate to what's going on and then maybe get to work, but we haven't heard any updates that there is an official vote happening yet. I'll keep you updated on that. Next, Maryland court rejects Governor Hogan's attempt to block federal unemployment programs. So basically, when it comes to the unemployment boost, uh, what's happening is Maryland has sued or the uh, unemployment people of Maryland have sued Maryland, the governor, to have the unemployment benefits reinstated because it was supposed to be canceled last Saturday and now it is reinstated. So that means people who were on unemployment expected to get the unemployment $300 per week canceled. It is back on in Maryland. So Maryland extends the pandemic unemployment benefits after court order, Indiana does not. So Indiana had a, no a lawsuit as well and it said that they were supposed to get the payments back, but nobody in Indiana on unemployment has received any of those $300 per week unemployment boosts. Now, when it comes to the $2,000 a month stimulus checks, the petition has reached 3 million signatures. So according to this article here in Forbes, it says in the ongoing campaign to get $2,000 a month stimulus checks, multiple change.org petitions have collectively amassed nearly 3 million signatures. As reported by Newsweek, the petitions vary in scope, but they are they have a recurring theme, get a fourth stimulus check to the American people. So if we look at this one right here, this is the most popular one. It's at 2,520,000 signatures. It actually jumped almost 60,000 signatures since I last mentioned it. So with this one, they want to have the fourth stimulus check. What they're saying is, I'm calling on Congress to support families with a $2,000 payment for adults and $1,000 payment for kids immediately and continuing regular checks for the duration of the crisis. Let me know down in the comments below. Do you agree with this? Disagree with this? There are still politicians who are fighting to have this into the American Families Plan, which is the part two reconciliation bill. Bernie Sanders Sanders tweeted this saying that what stimulus checks meant for the American people, financial instability fell by 43%, 
families' food shortages fell by 42%, anxiety and depression fell by 20%. Yes, government can and should continue to address the needs of working people, not just the 1%. So basically saying he still is in support of stimulus checks, but will it happen? Uh, Bernie Sanders, along with other politicians, have tried to get so many proposals into the American Families Plan, we still don't know what's in it and they're still negotiating. So when it comes time for a fourth stimulus check, yes, there is support. It has over 80 lawmakers now support for the direct payments for a fourth stimulus check, but will it happen? We don't know yet. We're going to have to wait and see what's going to be in the reconciliation bill. When will it happen? Uh, that question will be answered when we find out what's going on with the bipartisan infrastructure package as well as reconciliation bill, which should take big action July 12th. So we'll figure out if it's going to be in there and when they'll pass. I'll keep you updated on that. Next, I'm going to answer the questions you leave for me in the comments. Jerry Last asked, whatever happened to deadlines? Do they mean nothing? I agree with you. Originally, there was a June 1st deadline to have some type of bipartisan agreement for infrastructure. Then it turned to June 7th, and now everything is just up in the air. They're just working on it whenever they feel like it. So I agree. Uh, there used to be deadlines, but there's not. There's no accountability for those deadlines. There needs to be some type of accountability or consequence if they don't reach those deadlines. Otherwise, it just means nothing. Uh, James E. Cochran Jr. asks or says. They tax the working poor, so why don't they tax the rich? I think they ought to pay their fair share. Yeah, I think a lot of people agree that uh, if, you know, basically it's the middle class and working class are getting taxed the most, which is providing all the government with all its money, but the rich people kind of, you know, use loopholes and stuff that are created by the rich to not have to pay as many taxes and they should pay their fair share. How much is the forced stimulus? Uh, so at this point, there's a couple of proposals, $2,000 per month. I don't know if that's actually gonna happen. It might be a potential one-time stimulus check. We don't know the details of that yet. And that's all the stimulus news I have for you today. To hopefully brighten your day a bit, here is my daughter Bella's tip of the day. Hi guys, I love both stimulus my sticks. We will play. And guys, if, if if you want, if you want to be fashionable, be fashionable. Do whatever you want to do now, now, yes. or never. Because never. that if you do it now, you'll you'll do it, you'll do and it. you have to experience about it. You'll so that's all I wanted it. to tell for you today. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for watching up until this point. If you appreciate these updates, hit the like button down below. If you like how I show you the actual proof of what's going on as fact-based and fast-paced, uh, subscribe to the channel for more updates like this and I'll keep you updated. If you wanna check out any of my other channels, you could click either this link up here, I have two different channels going on, or you could click this link down over here for more stimulus updates. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care, be safe, thank you for watching.